his number one wish on his life bucket list to visit Skinwalker Ranch. What's going through your head when you get a phone call asking you for this guy from Area 51, this is his lifelong dream to come yeah. out to Skinwalker Ranch. I mean, does that validate? No, I, I just thought it was cool. Standing fully upright, this six foot six giant of a man in the back of this UTV. And I thought, that's odd. I received a call from one of my advisors saying that a certain individual, a prominent doctor out of Las Vegas, who had been working on Area 51, had been a consulting physician to Area 51, had as his number one request, his number one wish on his life bucket list to visit Skinwalker Ranch. Wow. And and this advisor of mine asked if I would be willing to host him. And I said, yeah, of course. I, I was intrigued by this individual's background. And I, I said, as long as they sign the confidentiality agreement and the liability waiver that I put in place, I have no problem hosting him. What and, did that conversation go like when he arrived? Well, so they arrive in Salt Lake City, sign the confidentiality agreement. I... I, of course, informed them that I, I did not want my identity as the owner in the public domain. I didn't want that disclosed, and I appreciated them keeping that private. I also told them that there had been reports, of course, for 20-plus years that there's strange activity on the property and that even though I hadn't witnessed anything. I mean, it's just... <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting a little ahead of myself no. here, but as a skeptic, as a skeptic of the entire operation that's been going on there, even yeah. after seeing the the two the images, photo images yeah. where you, you were still a skeptic, yeah. correct? And now you have a guy who had a major part in Area 51. Right. Which, I mean, what is, what's going through your head when you get a phone call asking you for this guy from Area 51, this is his lifelong dream to come yeah. out to Skimwalker Ranch? I mean, does that validate? No, I, I just thought it was cool. I okay. thought it was interesting. I was happy to host them. And so when they signed the confidentiality agreement and flew into Salt Lake City and met with me, you know, an hour before making the journey and flying out to the ranch, you know, I told them, I said, you understand, I, I've owned the ranch for six months and I haven't yet to experience anything unusual. I've been going out there periodically to inspect the property, meet with my team, and all I find is a beautiful landscape. So if you're expecting that you're going to come out today and see something unusual, bear in mind, I own the property, and I have yet to witness anything personally with my own eyes or even feel anything that would be even slightly unusual out on the property. So I, I look forward to hosting you today. I look forward to, to it being a, a fun day looking at a, a historic landscape that has a, a very interesting history to it, but uh, don't expect anything more than that. I wanted that disclaimer to be out there yeah. at the very beginning. And so we proceeded to, to fly out to the ranch. We were accompanied by my physicist, uh, who is Eric Bard, who continues to this day as our principal investigator. Eric was also a skeptic. Uh, Eric was the physicist brought in to debunk and disprove the claims of the gravitational physics effort that I had funded at oh, uh, really? our private so hangar facility. Previous, so I thought, who to better to bring in to bring scientific rigor and discipline and a critical eye and critical thinking skills to the ranch than Eric Bard? He had already disproved these core claims that uh, we had spent millions of dollars investigating. And... Uh, and was a very, very skeptical person. I mean, you could you could flat out call him that he, he's a he's a non-believer. And so Eric Bard, the physicist, accompanied us that day, as well as ranch manager Jim Morse. And uh, upon arrival, everyone wanted to hike up the mesa. Everyone wanted to get up on top of the mesa and look out over this incredibly beautiful property. And I was like, okay, fine. Knock yourselves out. I was I was wearing Armani slacks and you know black dress shoes and I didn't want to get dirty and I I was trying to trying to somehow get a line out at the time to to check my 
my voicemail. And so I, they proceeded to hike up to the top of the mesa. And within minutes, I hear Eric Bard, the physicist, start shouting down, Brandon, Brandon, get up here. And I look up and I yell, I said, really? You really want me to hike up? You want me to run up the face of the mesa to join you? He says, yes, get up here right now. And he's pointing to his, uh, his iPhone. So I shrug. Go booking it up the uh, the face of the mesa in my dress shoes and my slacks and and uh, as I arrive out of breath at the top of the mesa, he's sitting there looking at his phone and and motions for me to watch his iPhone. We sit there in silence for minutes. Nothing's happening. I see nothing unusual. I'm like, what what are you talking about? And Eric says, well, you should have seen it. My phone was malfunctioning in the most strange ways. It was. It was turning all sorts of magenta purple color. And I've never seen this. It was very, very unusual. And I just shrugged. I said, well, it, it's not doing it now. And about that time, you know, the others that were up there on the Mesa said that they were feeling a little bit woozy, feeling a little uneasy, they weren't, and wanted to hike back down and proceed with the tour of the ranch. And so we all, we all went down and uh, proceeded to drive out to Homestead 2, which is the, the cluster of old, old structures that seems to be a center of gravity for strange phenomena on the property. And as we pull up to Homestead 2 and we're all uh, kind of congregating out in front of those old structures, um, it, was, uh, it was interesting. You know, a few people said, well, do you feel the, the ground shifting? Uh, and and even Eric Bard said, "Yeah, I feel you guys feeling this sensation that I'm feeling, kind of vertigo." And I I was kind of across the courtyard uh, from them, and I I just smiled and said, "No, I I don't feel anything." And then all of a sudden, Eric says, "Ah, my phone's doing it again. My phone's malfunctioning again." Well, I I learned from earlier that I need to move fast if I'm going to see you know whatever is happening, and so I I dart over to his side, and sure enough, his whole phone had turned purple, had turned this magenta purplish color, and was flashing and acting all erratically. And, uh, and everyone was talking about how they, they were feeling uneasy. Well, thank goodness he had the presence of mind to screen capture the malfunctioning phone. I'll share that with you right now. Thank you. And uh, you can see it. In fact, he was taking... He was taking photos of me right before standing in the uh, the entry to Homestead Two in in front of the doorway, uh, just before you know they started feeling uneasy, and then ultimately the smartphone malfunction started occurring. Uh, it was strange. Uh, my brother Cameron, who is a you know very skilled aviator, has multiple degrees in aviation science and management, and my my little brother Matthew, who runs operations, who were there, said that they uh, they weren't comfortable uh, staying. They said we we want to we want to leave. Uh, we'll go to the airport. Call us later on today when you're available. But we're feeling uneasy, which I thought was the silliest thing. I'm like, come on, really? <laughs> what? So what? How many people from Area 51? It was well. So the, the, there was the one the surgeon. Uh, the doctor, and then he was accompanied by two security professionals. One was uh, uh, the former president of the California Hells Angels, and another one was a contractor. And then he had his son, uh, who was a grown adult. I don't know how old he was, uh, but he, his son also accompanied. So it was a group of four of them that joined, at the time, my brothers, Eric Bard, who was you know, my consulting physicist, and uh, Jim Morse, ranch manager. And they're all witnessing this. So what, what was the conversation like? They signed the paperwork, they signed the, the, the non-disclosure, the, 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 the waiver. What are they, what are they well, hoping to see? Well, I asked them, I said, after telling them, I've never seen a UFO. I've owned the ranch for six months. And all I've seen is a strikingly beautiful landscape. And I'm, I'm skeptical. I've never, never seen anything like that that I can report. And I, I proceeded to ask them, I said, we're sitting there preparing to leave for Skinwalker Ranch. I said, do, do you guys really believe in this UFO crap? 
And the two security guys, the, the two security professionals that were accompanying the doctor said no. They shook their heads, no, we, we don't believe it. And, uh, and the doctor just smiled. And he says, you guys don't even know what you're talking about. You have no idea what is real. And we all, we all just kind of shrugged it off. And I, I kind of winked at the two security guards knowingly that, oh, yeah, you know, the, the doctor's you know, probably just another UFO nut, but that's okay. He's a nice <laughs> enough guy. So anyways, we find ourselves out at Homestead 2. Smartphone malfunctioning. Everyone's feeling these physical effects. My brother's are feeling uneasy enough that they want to leave, and they leave. They're, they're happier driving and sitting at the airport for hours until I tell them that we're ready to fly back. And, uh, and I'm finding the whole thing interesting. Well, as we're, as we're all discussing kind of the history of Skinwalker Ranch and the homesteads, you know, we proceed to kind of get our phones out to take some pictures. I felt like it was a good photo opportunity. And lo and behold, my phone's dead. It had previously been at 80% charge. My phone's completely dead. Eric Bard's phone that had recorded that where he had screen captured the, uh, the anomaly, the, the strange colors and flashing was dead. The others' phones were dead. So we, you know, we didn't have our, our cameras. So I thought, darn, well, we better go take them back to, to the ranch house and plug them in and let them charge up. But we don't want to disrupt our day because of it. It was very frustrating. And so we took the phones back, put them in chargers, and then we proceeded to, to return back out to the old homesteads. This time we drove all the way back out to Homestead 3, which is beyond Homestead 2. And it's a single structure. It's 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 uh, it's pretty haunting looking, and uh, we pull up around the backside of the structure. This is October, October fourteenth uh, of twenty sixteen, and we all pile out and we all walk around the other side. And again, we're looking at the landscape and everyone's visiting and having a good experience. I mean, my brothers have returned, have left and returned to the airport, awaiting a call. You know, hours later and uh and we're just visiting and after about 10 minutes i ask well where's where's george the big guy the the security uh the six foot six security um professional that uh that was there was wasn't present and for some reason uh, we kind of lost track of him and everyone said well when we when we all piled out of the uh the open air polaris you know utv the ranger, you know, no one really paid attention. I said, well, let me go try to find him. So I proceed to walk around to the back of the, uh, the homestead, homestead three, to find George. And right as I'm coming around the corner in this, this grass area where we'd parked it and the, the vehicle being off in the distance, it was as if something cupped my ears. It was all of the... All of my hearing was was impacted. It was as if I walked into a into a soundproof room. Have you ever been into an anechoic chamber or a soundproof room? I have. And that sensation, the only the only thing you can do to simulate it right now is by by you know cupping your ears. It's like a frequency change. Yeah, all of the ambient noise disappears. And I thought it was the strangest thing. It was the strangest sensation. And then I see off in the distance, standing fully upright, this six foot six giant of a man in the back of this UTV. And I thought, that's odd. So I yell his name, George. And I can hear kind of muffled. It's almost like yelling underwater. I thought that was strange. And I, I proceed to, to walk to get closer and he's not responding. And as I near the vehicle and shout his name again, he's, he's standing upright with his eyes closed. And right as I'm nearing the vehicle, all of the ambient noise, all of the sound comes back. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist 
of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.